G'day guys, I'm Quacker Jack, and this is my 2019 Kawasaki Ninja 400. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that about four years ago, I did a speed test to see how quick I could get my bike from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. The claimed zero to 100 time for a stock 400 like this is about four and a half seconds. Embarrassingly, most of my times were over six seconds. I think my best was about five and a half. So you join me today in the middle of nowhere for one very good reason. Round two, we've got nobody around. We've got some nice big long straights and most importantly, the speed limit will allow me to do it. So today I wanna see if I can get better than five and a half seconds. Now back in that first video, I said that I weighed about 90 kilos, but today I weighed myself with all of my gear on, which I didn't do last time, and I'm sitting at exactly 100. And I wanna say that's all thanks to these big muscles that I've grown in that time, but realistically, I'm just a bit heavier. However, I've got way more experience now than I did back then. I've got my full license, I've ridden way more powerful and faster bikes, and I know how they handle. Last time we did this, the only thing that was different about the bike was the exhaust, which it had a Leo Vince on there, now we're back to the stock, so it is a stock bike. It is a really hot day here today. You've probably seen how sometimes it gets so hot here in Australia that the road melts. Well, I'm standing on the road right now and the rubber under my feet is sticky. Look at this, I'm not joking about the road melting. So I am determined to get a better time. Five and a half seconds is the one I'm trying to beat. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> All right, let's get the bike warmed up and a few practice runs in. We really are in the middle of nowhere. That should be enough runway, I reckon. Now, one of the big mistakes I made last time was having the revs way too low when taking off. So, let's try it this time. Okay, we need more runway. <laughs> Okay, eagle up there. Wow. No, okay. Alrighty, try again. Revs, I reckon six and a half thousand. Not bad, but I let the revs drop. That was the problem. Don't let the revs drop. And. That felt pretty good. <laughs> that felt pretty good. Got the front wheel off the off the tarmac there. <sighs> okay, I reckon we're ready to start doing this seriously. Now, one thing about this is that I'm not going to know how fast I'm going until I get home and actually manage to time it. So, what I'm going to do is use an app on my phone, and then I will put it in post. But I do have a speedometer app here. I reckon I've got it. I reckon I've got it. This one is about to go dead. So if I stop filming here, that's why. Okay. Rebs. Up. And... Zero to eight seconds. I don't believe you. I don't believe you for a second. That felt pretty quick. Hold the revs, hold the revs, hold the revs, and... Seven point three seconds. Not bad. I don't know how accurate this thing is, but I guess this is sort of a multi-purpose video. See how accurate these GPS speedometers are. 7.03, let's try a different one. Ready. No, I definitely hit 100 there. That felt quick. Okay, for science. Okay, well, that felt pretty good. I had the, the front end off. Ready, steady.
All right, guys, well, I don't know if there's any more I can do. I'll genuinely have no idea if I've done enough to hit that five and a half second time that I've set myself until I get back to the studio and go through this footage. I guess this has sort of turned into a two-part video. The first is, how fast can I go? And the second is, how accurate are those phone speedometers? But let's go back to the studio. I'm gonna go through all of the runs. I'm gonna see which one was best. I'm gonna put the timer up on the screen and we'll see if I beat that five and a half second time that I set myself. Well, I guess we've learned a few things today. And the first is that I am no good at that. My best time was 5.38 seconds, which I was a little bit shocked at. So what I did is I went back through my original video and re-timed myself. Turns out the best time that I got last time was 5.56, so just under six seconds. So that does mean that I did do a little bit better this time than last time. I think though, at the end of the day, I'm just not that good at launching these little bikes. I've watched other people do their runs online as well, but they never tell you their weight or their height. So I'm guessing my overall size definitely hinders me a little bit there. The other thing we learned was that these phone speedometers aren't that accurate. Mine seemed to be about one and a half to two seconds out for each run that I did. And I guess that's no real surprise, but if you're using one, just keep that in mind. Looking back over my runs, I probably could have revved it out a little bit further in first gear. I did hit the red line in some of the runs, but not all of them. Now look, I don't really normally do this type of riding. I'm not into wheelies or, you know, hooning about. I prefer to head up into the mountains and attack some twisties. But there you have it guys. I suppose at the end of the day, I did get a little bit quicker than last time. So I did actually get five and a half seconds this time. Whereas last time it was just under six. So I'll take that as a win. Still not great, <laughs> but you know, I'll keep practicing and who knows if you guys want it, maybe one day we'll do a round three. But thanks for watching anyway. If you yourself have a Ninja 400 and have done your own timing, let me know what you got. I'm sure it's <laughs> probably better than my times. I'll accept the fact that I'm not that good at that. Thanks for following along and until next time, see ya.